Oh, I'm so hot. I wish I had something cold to drink. Hello. Who are you? I'm Steven, and this is cold coffee. How do you make that? It's really easy. I can show you how. Wow, thanks, Steven. Anytime. Hello, my name is Steven Holm, and I'm with Homegrounds. Today, we're talking about cold coffee. There's a lot of ways to make it. What are some of the pros and cons of each? Let's get right into it. Now to start off, let's talk about the easiest way to make iced coffee that is not good. And that is just taking hot coffee that you brewed and throwing it in the fridge. A lot of chains and bigger companies will do this because they're brewing hot coffee throughout the day. You get to the end of the day and you have a bunch left. So you just throw it in the fridge and that's your iced coffee that you'll sell tomorrow. It's little to no waste. It's easy. But what's the problem with it? And that is oxygen. Oxygen is coffee's worst enemy pretty much in every part of the coffee process from roasting to grinding and then brewing. And that's because oxidation in coffee causes bitterness. It causes it to taste stale and basically lose a lot of flavor. You do not want oxygen being introduced into your coffee. And so that's the problem with taking just hot coffee, throwing it in the fridge, it's going to get a lot of oxidation taking place, and that just doesn't taste good. So what are some alternatives? The first method is cold brew. You're probably very familiar with cold brew. If you're not, we have a few videos about it, but essentially it is just taking cold water, coffee grounds, and letting them mix up, become friends for like 12 to 24 hours filtering out those coffee grounds and boom, you have cold brew. Now, even though this is taking a long time, you're probably thinking, but Steven, oxygen? Well, the good thing about cold brew is that oxidation occurs quicker through heat. So when you're using cold water, oxidation won't take place as fast. So that's why cold brew works. And it tastes pretty good because you're using cold water instead of hot water it's going to get rid of a lot of that acidity, so it's gonna taste a little smoother. But that's where we come into the negatives of cold brew, one of which is that you are losing acidity. And that's one of the great things about coffee. It's what makes a lot of different coffees unique, and that's their acidity, the flavor of the acidity, the strength of it, and that's something really exciting that a lot of people look for in coffees. So when you make cold brew, you are losing out on that. Another negative to cold brew is that it takes a lot of time, at least 12 hours, and it takes a lot of coffee. You're using a ratio of about one part coffee to five parts water, and that's pretty strong compared to, say, just a regular hot drip coffee, which is like a one to 16 ratio. So it's less efficient than the other methods we'll be talking about. Moving on, we get into cold drip coffee. Now, this is similar to cold brew in that we are using cold water to brew, but it's working a little bit differently. I have a brewer over here that I will demonstrate. So usually with cold drip brewers, you have three sections. They're usually made of glass. You have the top one, which is going to hold cold water or even ice water, and that's going to drip very slowly by use of a kind of mechanism to adjust your flow rate. Drip into the second section, which is going to hold your bed of coffee. And that water is going to slowly drip on that bed, slowly seep through and extract out of it because cold water needs more time to extract coffee. And then it's going to drip into your bottom section. You may have seen these brewers in cafes. They sometimes are super tall with all these beautiful glass components. Those are very nice, or you can get one for home like this one, but not this one. This one was really bad. I bought it off of Amazon because it was cheaper than other brand names, and it was a bad choice. It was broken out of the box, and I broke it even more trying to fix it. Uh, Brewer is a really popular one for home. It's a little expensive at like 80 or $90, but it's probably worth it, especially compared to this one. Now, how does it differ from cold brew? Well, first off, it's gonna be faster, but still take at least a couple hours, usually, depending on your grind size and your flow rate. So it's gonna be faster than cold brew, but still not super fast. But in the cup, it's gonna taste 
a little more full bodied than cold brew, a little more rich. You're gonna get more of the complex flavors out of coffee than you would in cold brew. I would say it highlights particular coffees, like their origin, a little bit better than cold brew does, but that comes at a cost. The negatives of cold drip is that it's very specialized equipment. Usually you need this fancy system versus cold brew. You can just use any jar and you just need to filter it. There it goes, breaking. But another downside with this, and it's the same one we had with cold brew, is that you are missing out on some of the flavors of coffee. You need hot water in order to extract certain flavors out of coffee. You just can't do it with cold water. And so how can you use hot water to brew cold coffee? Well, let's move into our next method, an iced pour over. Now an iced pour over is really easy to make. You just need a pour over or you could even use an automatic drip brewer and you would just fill your carafe or whatever you're brewing into with ice. You would brew with less water the amount varies based on what recipe you're using. I usually like to cut my water amount in half and I'll just grind slightly finer so that it takes a little bit longer to extract and boom, ice pour over. By brewing hot and having that hot liquid immediately drop onto ice, it's gonna cool it very rapidly, uh, preventing a lot of the negative side effects of oxidation. And so now we have the great benefits of brewing with hot water. You're getting a lot more of the nuanced flavors, a lot of complexity out of the cup. You're just getting all of those flavors out of the coffee that you can't get with cold water. And then another advantage of ice pour overs is that they're fast. You don't have to wait a few hours for it to finish. It takes the same amount of time that it would take for you to brew hot coffee. But there is one thing with ice pour overs that maybe make them not perfect, depending on what you're looking for in a beverage. And that is that you are using a smaller ratio. You're using about half the amount of water that you would brewing hot coffee. And the issue with that is that there are stages in coffee extraction. And when you're not using all of the water, because a lot of that water is in the ice that's being melted, you are losing out on some of those stages of extraction. And those stages provide a lot of the complexities and certain flavors in your coffee. So how do we solve that? Let's move on to my favorite, flash chilled coffee. Now flash chilled coffee is when you brew a full pour over or automatic drip brewer of hot coffee. And now you just need a way to take that hot coffee and make it cold as fast as possible. And there's a few ways you can do that. The way I've seen some like commercial shops do it is by having a giant coil submerged in an ice bath. That's similar to a wart chiller if you're familiar in beer brewing. But basically you're brewing that hot coffee. It's going through a coil that is surrounded by cold water. And so that's cooling it down until eventually it's cold. And you're doing that with the entire brew. And so that's quickly making your hot coffee cold, thereby reducing the effects of oxidation but we are also getting all stages of the extraction process. Now, if you don't have a giant coil in an ice bath, I don't blame you, I do not either. But what I do have has been sitting back here the whole time. And this is a device called the Cold Wave. I actually made it before this video and that's what I've been drinking this whole time. And it is delicious. Now, how this works is you have two parts. You have the normal reservoir here where you would put your hot coffee in and then you have this, which this is basically just a lot of individual, I'll just say like ice packs. I don't know what's actually in there, but you put this in the freezer and it provides a ton of surface area and surface area is what's gonna cool down your hot beverages quicker. So you pour your hot coffee in here, you have this gallery of ice packs, that's not a good word for it, and then you drop it in and it cools your beverage and it does so extremely quickly. I did some tests with this and you can see that it went from about 150 degrees to 40 degrees in less than two minutes, which is just crazy. And so the benefits of a method like this is you are getting all the potential possible out of a coffee. There is so much that goes into coffee from where it is grown to how it was roasted and all these things contribute to its flavor and you are able to get all of that flavor out of the coffee by brewing hot 
using all the stages of extraction and immediately chilling it. This method is also the most efficient. You are using a ratio of one to 16 or however you usually brew hot coffee. The last pro is that it's going to be very quick. Sure, you have to brew the hot coffee and then chill it, but ideally that chilling is only gonna take a minute or two, and that's much quicker than cold brew being like 12 to 24 hours. The only downside really of this method is you do need specialized equipment. You need another coffee thing floating around your house and it does have to freeze. So you do have to account for that time that you have this in the freezer, but I just leave mine in there all the time and then whenever I wanna use it, boom, boom. That's the noise it makes. So those are the most popular ways to make cold coffee drinks. I hope that this was helpful. If there's anything I missed or if you think I'm wrong about anything, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Those really help this channel and us being able to make videos like this. And until next time, Happy brewing.